Women Geographers, it's time for us to sit down and take a look at how a state developed. How did that country develop? Let's go ahead and take a look at it. All right, so where did we get a country from? Now, the first thing to understand is a country and a state are the same thing. So when we say the development of the state, we just also mean the development of a country. Origins might trace back thousands of years to another time period where we had city-states. City-states were cities that had a wall around it for protection, and they owned the farmland outside of there. Now, sometimes city-states would go on to conquer other city-states and they would form an empire, but that still quite wasn't what a country was. Later on, we get the Roman Empire, and the Roman Empire rose up and was a gigantic landmass empire, but it still quite wasn't what a country was. And the Roman Empire fell and broke up into little medieval kingdoms. It was later on that we start to see the rise of a country. When the Roman Empire fell, it started to form into little monarchies where kings started to rise up. And those areas battled each other, but those still weren't a country. The first point where we really see a country start to form was around 1648 with something called the Peace of Westphalia, or the Treaty of Westphalia. Basically, we had a lot of religious wars going on in Europe. We had a lot of kingdoms fighting with each other. Well, the Peace of Westphalia was setting up that for the first time, they were, people were going to start having more self-determination, that we were going to draw borders around ethnic groups that spoke the same religion and focus on, on that, versus having one religious leader rule the entire area, or this religious emperor rule the entire area. So instead of having a single emperor or a religious ruler like a pope guide over an entire area, each little ethnic group was going to start forming its own borders and create its own country. And we started to see places like England and France and Spain start rising up to form these countries. The next big evolutionary step of the state was after World War I. World War I was a horrible, bloody war that Europe really did not want to ever have to see again. So when they were dividing up countries after the war at the Treaty of Versailles, there was an attempt to put all the ethnic groups together to try to prevent battles in the future. That if everybody of the same ethnicity lived within their own territory, and were able to have self-determination, this might reduce the chance at future wars. The problem was countries still wanted to have certain resources. They still had want to have certain access to certain rivers and seas. So nothing was ever perfectly done. Even more noticeable was Germany, where many German people were still split up from their homeland country where some of these German people were found to be in Austria or Czechoslovakia or France. And that was because of punishment that was done to Germany. Germany was punished for losing World War I and they lost certain ter territory. Well, the problem is that creates more resentment. And it still leads to another world war where the Germans elect a very radical leader. So when we look at the idea of the state, you really wanted to have people with their own ethnicity having self-determination. And even in the modern era, we still see groups trying to break off and try to form their own ethnic areas. And we've seen this in Spain and Belgium and other places around the world. <laughs> 